<clears throat> we're going to talk about inequalities. And we took a few notes in class, but we're going to go over them again. So inequalities and you see this that equals less than then we have greater than We have equal to, we have less than or equal to, and we have greater than or equal to. There is a secret about when you multiply or divide by a negative. You must flip the symbol. Okay, that's a rule that you have to remember. And then when you're graphing the inequalities, when you're graphing, if you're on the number line, oh, that should be one, less than, you could, let's say if it's less than two. So you would circle it, but don't color it in, okay? Because it cannot be two. You ask yourself, could it be two? No, then you just circle the number, okay? And then if it was like <clears throat> x would be greater than two, it would have gone this way, okay? But remember, if it can't be that number, you need to circle it. So that's going to kind of be an open circle when we graph it, an open circle when we graph it, and then if it could be that number, you're going to fill it in. Okay, so let's say if it could be negative 2, I'm going to fill it in. Because if x could be negative 2, you need to fill it in. Okay, those are just kind of a, a good note review. And now we're going to look at some inequalities. <clears throat> and I'm going to work on notebook paper because it's a little bit more room. So if we have 5x plus 4 is less than 11 minus 2x. <clears throat> I want to get my x, my variable, on the left-hand side. So in order to do that, I have to take this negative 2x, cancel it on this side, and move it to the other side. And just like when we solved the equations, we drew a line whatever you do to one side you must do to the other side. So to get my negative 2x to this side I have to cancel it out on on the right hand side. So I need to add 2x. Negative 2x plus 2x equals 0. So it canceled out. So whatever I do to this side I must do to this side. So I'm going to add 2x. And when I do that I get 7x. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and write it all out and we'll do it step by step. <clears throat> so now I need to get my whole numbers together. 
So I need to grab four and bring it over to my right hand side. But I need it to cancel out. So if it's a positive four, I need to turn it that side to zero to cancel out. So you would need to subtract four. That brings down your 7x is less than, then you have 11 minus 4 would be 7. And then I want to get 7 off of x because I'm solving for x. So if you're multiplying, you do the opposite, which would be division. So x has to be less than, and if you have 7 over 7, that equals 1. So on your paper, on your graph, you have x is less than 1. So create your graph. And you ask yourself, can x equal 1? Could x be 1? It can't. So remember, we're just going to circle it because it cannot be 1. And x is less than 1. So if it's less than, it could be 0. It could be a negative 1 or a negative 2, but it cannot be 1. So you leave it open. Okay, let's look at another one. 2 times 2x minus 8 minus 8x is less than or equal to 0. Okay. You have to distribute your 2. So 2 times 2 is 4x. 2 times a negative 8 would be a negative 16. And then you bring down your negative 8x less than equal to 0. Okay, I have two variables, 4x and a negative 8x. They're already on the same side, so I want to combine those. So a positive 4x and a negative 8x will leave me with a negative 4x. Didn't draw my line. So then I need to get my negative 16 on the other side. And to do that, it needs to cancel out. So I do the opposite, which is add 16 to both sides. When you bring it down, I'm going to have a negative 4x is less than equal to 16. And then I want to solve for x. I want to get negative 4 off of x. To do that, since it's multiplying, you're going to do the opposite. And I just multiplied or divide. Anytime you do that, you must flip your sign. So I'm going to go ahead and write my sign flip it. And so now I have x and 16 divided by negative 4 is negative 4. So to graph it, after all that I didn't even flip the sign, did I? I told you to flip it, but I didn't flip it. Oh my goodness. I just looked at that. I told you to flip it, but I didn't flip it. Sorry. So we're going to take it over here and do x is greater than or equal to a negative 4. So make your number line. Okay. And ask yourself, can x be negative 4? If it can be negative 4, you color it in.
because it has that line there. It can be a negative 4. So x is greater than negative 4. And it's going to go this way. Ask yourself, could 1 be greater than negative 4? Yes. Negative 3 is greater than negative 4? Yes. So that kind of helps you to know where your arrow is going to be going. Also, since we're putting the variable on the left-hand side, whatever direction your inequality is facing, that's the way your arrow is going to go. That only works if your variable is on the left-hand side. Okay, let's look at number three. Sorry, I'm a little unorganized here. We have two thirds m is less than two. Kind of freak out because it's a fraction, but don't. They're actually really easy. M is multiplying. So normally we would divide, but when you divide by a fraction, Remember, we keep it, change it, flip it. So we're actually just going to multiply by the reciprocal. And that cancels it out. So that canceled out, and that left us with m is less than. And I'm going to bring it over here, and we're going to multiply by two, 3 over 2. Remember, a whole number, add your 1. So in reality, it's 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 1 is 2. This is an improper fraction. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So m is less than 3. So again, we're going to make your number line. And you ask yourself, can m be 3? Could m be 3? No. So you circle it. So m is less than 3. Well, what number is less than 3, 2 or 4? 2 is less than. So your arrow is going to go this way. And remember, if the variable is on the left-hand side, your arrow on your number line will point in the same direction. Okay, number four. It is 5x minus 4 is greater than 4 minus 3x. I want to gather my variables. I have the 3x over here and a 5x to the left. And remember, we want the variable on our left-hand side. So if I want my variable on the left-hand side, I'm going to take negative 3x and cancel it out. To do that, I have to add 3x because I want it to equal 0. Whatever you do to this side, you must do it to this side. And that leaves you with 8x minus 4 is greater than 4. I want to get rid of this 4 and move it to my right hand side. So you're going to add 4, add 4, so you'll have 8x is greater than 8, my bad. So to get x off of 8, I need to divide by 8. So x is greater than 1. So on your paper, if x is greater than 1, you find 1, and you ask yourself, can x be 1? Could x equal 1? No. So you're going to circle it. x is greater than 1. 
So is it going to be is 2 greater or is 0 greater? 2 is greater. So my line, my arrow is going to go that way. And again, since my variable is on the left hand side, my inequality tells me that's the way the arrow is going to go. Okay, let's look at the bottom. Write an algebraic expression for each. And you just really have to think about how it's worded. This is all about vocabulary. The greatest possible value of 3y is 30. So the greatest value it can be is 30. Could it be greater than 30? No. So. 3y cannot be greater than 30, but it could be 30. So it has to be 30 or less. So it's 3y is less than or equal to 30. Because this can, this is the greatest possible value. So it can't be greater than 30, but it could equal about 30. Number two, the product of 3x and 3x plus 1 is at least 35. Could it be more than 35? Yes, but it has to be at least 35. It can be more, just can't be less. So, in the word product, always go with multiplication. So, 3x is going to be multiplied 3x plus 1, and that's going to be greater than or equal to 35. And just go back and double check your vocabulary. The product, so we're multiplying, is at least 35. So it can equal 35, but it can't be less than 35. It can be more than 35. So that's why we wrote greater than or equal to. Okay, the minimum value, okay, so that means the minimum value of 2x plus 1 is 13. So minimum means it can't be any lower than, but it could be greater than, and it could equal 13, but that's the minimum it could be. So this has to be at least 13, but it could be greater. So after you write the inequality, go back and just double check your wording and make sure it makes sense. Number four, <clears throat> when x is divided by three, the quotient, okay, there's your key words right here, know your vocabulary. So x is divided by three, the quotient is more than, so greater than, 7. Can it be 7? No. Can it be less than? No. It's more than. So I'm not putting that, the greater than or equal to, because it cannot be 7. It has to be more than 7. And the number is divided by 3. So it's going to be x divided by 3 is greater than 7. The next one is 10 more than a number. So I have x as my number and I have 10 more is greater, greater than 50. Number six, <clears throat> 10 more than the quotient of a number and eight, okay, is at least 12. So the quotient and eight, of a, and it's 10 more, don't forget your 10 more, is at least 12. Can it be less than 12? Can it be 12? Can it be more than 12? So at least 12 says it could be 12, so my line goes under, 
and it could be more than 12. Okay, I hope this video helped. Please submit after watching it and you can leave any comments. Sometimes I do make a mistake, so if you catch a mistake, let me know. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask those on Google Classroom.